Welcome to Weld.com. Getting ready to pull the trigger on the ESOB 235. Uh, we just unboxed it a while ago. We did one video where we're playing around with the stick process. Now we're going to go over to MIG, except we're going to run SMIG. I have not personally run SMIG, even on the 215. That's one something I just, I don't know why, I just didn't play with it. So now I am. And we've done this well, we do this well a lot in procedures, which is uh, the downhill route and the uphill filling cap. And I'm just, the reason I want to do it is because I want to see the difference uh, feel here. I, I, did, I don't know anything about this, so I'm learning. I do know that this machine has a lot of great features to it. Uh, this is a cool gun, the Spray Master, Tweco gun, very comfortable. Uh, this machine offers a full range of 035, both in short arc, obviously globular, spray, if we just change the gas, we'd spray on it. We've demonstrated that on the, even the smaller machine. So <clears throat> I want to get these uh, plates prepped, 30 degree bevel angle, C25 gas, about 20, 25 cubic feet per hour. And again, I'm not setting an individual voltage or, you know, again, I may make some huge mistakes here, but I'm kind of learning. So let's dive into this together. Let me get dressed. I'll be right back. Welcome back. I have, uh, I've set this up here with my normal gap. Again, we're running the SMIG 035 wire, C25 short arc. And I've set this thing up. You know, there's nothing when I notice going to SMIG, it's, it's going off the material thickness. Okay. And if I just set it up on material thickness, it's giving me a, a wire feed speed of like 340. Obviously, that's for fillet welds and stuff. I'm not doing a fillet weld. So I'm kind of, let me say, cheating the program here a little bit. I know that on a lot of machines around the shop, doesn't matter the brand, Lincoln Miller, the ESOBs, anything that we're running around here, I know that I am around 190, 210 or so for a route on the root pass, the wire feed speed on a root pass. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this thing down to 200 and just experiment and see what it looks like. Let's dance. Okay, just, just a first indication here. It's nice and wet, meaning I could probably turn up my wire feed speed. I'm going to do about half of this or a third of this and stop. Okay, and the reason I'm stopping is because I want to make a value change and have you see it and and listen to it. To me that sounded sluggish. We're reading 21 volts, 105 amps, and it sounds like 21 volts to me. It doesn't, it's not necessarily that super crisp. Is it wrong? No. It's the machine taking over and reading things. Bead is real flat and it's okay. It does have reinforcement, it's flat. Now, what I expect to happen is I turn this up, is it's gonna compensate for, I mean, I expect this to happen. I, I expect it to have more voltage. So from 200, I'm gonna go to 225. Boy, that's sensitive. Doggy. Ah, let's go 230. So essentially on the machine, I went from eighth inch to three sixteenths. Okay. So now I'm 230 inches a minute. And we're going to see, you know, if I didn't change voltage, if I was doing a separate independent control outside of S MIG and I just changed the wire feed speed, I would expect to tighten up the arc. Okay. I made a wire feed speed change and man this thing sounds like it's got a lot tighter crisper arc. A very impressive arc. Just oscillating inside the root face, which is about one sixteenth of an inch. And this thing is flying down through here. Wow. 
Wow, what a great arc that was. That was impressive. Okay, before turning this over, before turning this over, I would expect to have more reinforcement than when I had this set a while ago. A minute ago when I pulled the trigger, it was reading 21 volts, 107, 107 amps or something like that. I couldn't remember the amps. I do remember the volts and it sounded like it. It sounded wet, and hot, fluid. I knew I was breaking the sidewall down. I went ahead and changed this to a 230 inches per minute, which is equivalent to the 3 16th thickness. This is on S MIG again, S MIG. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn this over and I expect to see more reinforcement. And I do. It's raised up. This up here is a little flat and sunk in. This here has more reinforcement. It ran crisper, faster, a little tighter arc. It never sputtered. Uh, you know, and I've got the ground hooked onto the table. I don't have it hooked directly to that. To me, that's just impressive. The machine has great arc features to it. So I'm going to go clean this out, buff it. I'm going to leave this exactly where it is, and I'm going to start doing some uphill fills and caps and see what it does, just to see what this S-MIG is all about. So I'll be right back. I've left the machine at 230 volt wire feed speed on S-MIG just to see what it's going to do here. Wow, this thing is just beyond smooth. Absolutely beyond smooth. I'm going to do something here. I'm going to play around. I'm going to increase my electrical stick out. And the machine is pretty much compensating by increasing the volts, it looks like anyway. Unbelievably smooth. Whew. I like this as far as the features. I went ahead and made another adjustment and went to 270 on SMIG wire feed speed. That was me. That was a lazy finger right there. Again, I try to hold real light pressure on my guns. To me, that's just, ah, it's a little active. It's a little active. It's good and hot, but it's peaked. I don't like the way it's peaking up there. I like to have it a little round. So, uh, 18.7 volts, uh, 126. I'm I, maybe I'm too full for what we're trying to do, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it back down to probably 230. Goes in increments of 10. Interesting. I learned something. I'm going to go down to 220. I'm going to go down to 220. And again, my plates are saturated with heat too, so.
I like this wire setting better for what we're doing. I am a little too full, but again, looking at arc features more than anything. Yeah, I like the way that laid down better. It's got more of a gentle rolling crown to it. This is probably still okay, although it's tending to be, looks to me like it's a little high. It could be pushing the eighth inch tolerance. That's really not what I'm looking at for, uh, you know, the weld, yes, but I'm, I'm pulling the trigger here. I've never run this S-MIG. I've never run this machine on MIG. So, <clears throat> We ran it on stick a while ago and I was highly impressed just for what I've seen so far on this program for S-MIG. I'm highly impressed, okay? This is not normally how I run MIGs. I never had this when I was growing up and I mean S-MIG is new to me, so a great feature. I can see some, some things. I want to do a test here in a minute and I want to I want to force this to weld back up inside of a corner and see if it's going to take control and smooth out the arc force. I like what I'm seeing as far as a good crisp short arc, uh, the pool wetting into the parent metal and everything, I like it. We ran a real nice route. We did a, a decent fill pass. I like this part of the cap. This is on 220, 3 8 plate, uphill groove. It equates to 3 16 but what I'm noticing on SMIG and all the programs that are written they're always written to a fillet weld. They're not written to a groove weld. Again, I just, you know, I wanted to pull the trigger and see what it was gonna do in a groove. So, am I trying to sell you this machine? No, but if you're looking, you ought to be looking at something like this right here. I'm telling you, this is impressive. It is impressive for features. The, the power to weight ratio, what you can do with this thing, you can have it in the shop, fabricating stuff. You can take it out to the field. You can run it on 220, you can run it on 110 volt, stick, MIG, TIG, flux core. Gee whiz, I mean, this thing will get after it and do some work. Uh, I hope this helps. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the videos. I'm Bob Moffitt with Weld.com.